Welcome to Civil Fanatics. Today we will discuss the principles of surveying. The first principle of surveying is hold to part. This is the ruling principle that is used for both plane surveying and geodetic surveying. The hold to part principle of surveying is a method that initially starts with setting or establishing control points by less precise methods and further details are established by minor control points. So here the concept of whole to part is commonly used for plane surveying as well as geodetic surveying and this is the important principle that is used in surveying that have reduced amount of errors and accumulation of error is reduced drastically. So to understand the concept of whole to part, I'll consider an example of surveying a line, say AB. So AB is a line that need to be surveyed. And when you are considering whole to part method, I'll just explain how part to whole method works. When we are doing part to whole method, that is, we are doing part to part of surveying. So we are going to divide AB into different parts. Say AC, CD, DE, EF and FB. So here the survey line AB is divided into AC, CD, DE, EF and FB. When we go for a part to hold survey, what we actually do is we start the surveying from AC, then we move from CD to DE, EF to FB. That is, we go from one direction to other. So, in this case, what happens is when we start surveying from a single point alone, we can see that any cause of error in any of the measurement of any of the part will get accumulated and finally our line actually gets diverted from AB to some other distance other than the survey line. So this means that any error in the preceding measurement will get accumulated and that will be reflected in the final measurement. So this is the disadvantage of a part to whole method. So here comes the importance of whole to part method. In whole to part method, I have the same AB line, which is again divided into the same portion, say AC, CD, DE, EF and FB. But the measurement is carried out in this order. Say I start measuring AC, then I start measuring BF, then I start measuring CD, then EF, and then DE. So from the outer ends of the line we are moving inwards. So this is the concept of whole to part method in surveying. So from outwards we are moving inwards. So what happens is we have two uh, major reference or two major reference to start with. We start with AC and also we start from B BF. So there is less chances of possibilities of error. And here if somehow there is an error happening at AC, we can see that the error will be reflected in CD also. But that error will be localized within CD and DE because somehow BF will be measured right. So. I hope the concept of whole to part method is understood. In whole to part method, we move from outwards, from, from outward to inward. So this will help to reduce the possibilities of errors that are because that that is caused because we have different main reference point. But in case of uh, not going for whole to part method, as I explained before, uh, we only have a single reference. If the starting goes wrong, the whole succeeding measurements go wrong. But in case of whole to part method, we have different reference of starting. So 
the accumulation of errors reduced. So part method, the important advantages are it reduces the accumulation of error and it also helps to localize the error formation so that the correction is very much possible. Second important principle is locating a point with two reference points. So this principle states that any point must be measured with two point of reference which are the points that are already determined by standard measurements and they are fixed. So to help you understand this concept we always need to fix a particular point with reference to two control points or two reference points. So control points are points that are already measured by standard methods or standard surveying methods and we have finally fixed that position. So they are fixed points, they are control points and with respect to those control points we are going to locate any particular distance, a relative distance with respect to that reference. So here the surveying principle states that to estimate the position of a single point you need minimum of two reference point. So I can explain this with the concept where the points P and Q are already fixed by knowing the distance PQ. So if I say there is a distance PQ already known, I am fixing the distance of P and Q. Now we need to establish a point R, right? So this point R can be located with respect to this distance PQ by different methods. In first method, I already have PQ distance given then I'm going to measure BR distance and QR distance and after which I can locate the distance PR and PQ. So here the known distances are PQ, PR and QR. The second option is PQ distance is known and from the reference line I'm drawing a perpendicular or the, from the to the unknown point R. So this way also we can represent the point R in the plot. The third option is that we know the distance PQ and the distance QR and the angle PQR is also known. So this is another method by which R can be located. Next method is the distance PR. PQ is already known. PR and QR are not measured, but angles are PQ and PQR are also known. So in this method, PR and QR distance is not known. We only know the distance PQ and the included angles made with P and made with Q. In the next method, PQ distance is already known. The angle RQP and the PR distance are obtained and based on which we can locate the position of R. So these are the five methods, different methods that are used. The first method is commonly used for chain surveying. First method. First method is where PQ is known. The distance RP and QR also is known. The second method is uh, that is taking offset from the unknown point. We are taking an offset from R to the reference line. So this is mainly used to represent details in a plot. So if we have a, uh, a certain elements that is an important part in the plot, we can represent those details by using offset. In case of third method, it is mainly used for traversing as we in third method we know the distance PQ and PQR distance has to be measured. So uh, it is uh, commonly used in traversing method. The included angles can be either determined by means of a protractor or by trigonometric methods. Next method is uh, commonly used for triangulation where the included angles are, are more important. So included angles are only measured the distances are not measured. So this is mainly used for triangulation surveying. 
last method is uh, where we have PQ distance, we have the included angle, PQR and one side measurement. So the angle, included angle and the side opposite to that included angle is measured. So this method is uh, also used in traversing but it is of minor importance. So I have also made a video on what is uh, plane table surveying, geodetic surveying and also triangulation. So I will be adding that video link in the description below. I hope you understood the concept of surveying and the surveying principles which is very important in uh, many objective questions and in your academics, civil engineering academics. Hope this video was informative. For more informative videos, subscribe to Engineering Fanatics, learning with these and see you in the next video. Thank you.